Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or formulations or ingredients or something you may have heard about or read about, if you've got a problem patient or a problem client or somebody in your family or you yourself just can't get your handle on whatever is ailing you, we are here for you on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844 236 6010 if you have questions about the longevity products or our truth skin health products 844-236-6010 and of course if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you're advertised or recommended on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my blog, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, also brightsideben.com. You can sign up right off the website if you want to. If you want to be an entrepreneur, we have made it easy for you. I love the idea of being an entrepreneur. I remember when I was working for Kmart, I was a Kmart pharmacist. I remember punching a clock and taking all kinds of crap from, from the store manager and assistant managers and working harder and harder for less pay. And I decided I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And I'm telling you, being an entrepreneur is not for the timid. It takes cojones. It's a, a journey for warriors. It's a journey for people who aspire to having more, to having a better life, to being their own boss, to being a better person, really, to being a great person, really. It's about the hero's journey. If you ever heard of the hero's journey, it's the hero's journey that Joseph Campbell used to talk about. Joseph Campbell was a was a mythologist and a historian, and he used to talk about the hero's journey, which is a basic template of all great stories from the prodigal son in the Bible to uh, Lord of the Rings to Star Wars to uh, anytime you have a great story where you have somebody who's starting off as a normal, regular, everyday person, and then he goes through battles and slays dragons and then comes out as a winner at the end. That's called the hero's journey, and nothing exemplifies it more than being an entrepreneur. In the book Double Dip, which is one of my all-time favorite business books, it's the Ben and Jerry story. These two super entrepreneurs, Ben and Jerry, they're the, the, the paragon of being entre an entrepreneur, they talk about how when they started their business, everything went wrong. The tops came in wrong. The sizes of the, of the cartons came in wrong. They couldn't get the fruit that they needed. The facility that made their ice cream stopped, uh, just all of a sudden stopped producing it for them, and they had to find a, they had to find a manufacturer really quickly. And then 20 years later, they sell their business for uh, a couple hundred million dollars or more, I think. I don't know, just ridiculous money. And I'm not saying all entrepreneurs have this kind of success, obviously, but and some have no success at all. But those that do will tell you that being an entrepreneur is the way to go. It is the greatest journey you could be on from, uh, from a business sense. And this is what's so cool about longevity. It's, it's business in a box. It's like it, paint by numbers entrepreneurialship. And not only is the business easy, and not only is the business made easy, but they have classes and education and information. And the function of, of longevity is to, the purpose of longevity is to help people be healthy in all ways. Mentally healthy, physically healthy, biz, uh, financially healthy. And they made it simple. All we have to do is bring to the table, uh, all we have to bring to the table is belief. 
We got to believe in what we're doing. We have to believe in nutrition. We got to believe in health. And this, by the way, is true about not just financial health, but physical health too. We got to believe that we can be healthy. You know, I talk to people all the time on this radio program, in my presentations, on the telephone, and health is simple. This is the, the fundamental idea that I want to promote and that I've been promoting is that health is simple, which means if we are still sick after hearing these ideas and incorporating these ideas, there's something missing, and I think what, it seems to me that what we're missing is our belief. It's the mental component. Is the idea that we can do this. If we're not getting better, despite hearing all of these ideas that we promote and we talk about on the program, if we still have our atherosclerosis and our osteoporosis and our autoimmune disease and our eczema, to me, you just don't believe it. The person just doesn't believe it's possible. And, and that's understandable because we're told it's not possible. People are told by the medical model that they're going to be on their medicines for the rest of their life, that they're going to be sick for the rest of their life, that the only thing they could do is have their thyroid removed or gallbladder removed or cells irradiated. Well, I'm here to tell you that health is simple because the body is designed to be healthy. The body is designed to renew itself, to heal itself, to repair itself. This is the kind of system we have. And if we're not renewing and repairing, well, then something's interfering with it. And if we're doing, supposedly doing everything we're supposed to be doing, then what, to me what's interfering is this mental component that we don't believe it is so. Belief is so important whether we're talking financial health or whether we're talking physical health or we're talking any health or we're talking anything. Belief is important. It's the first step. Anyway, didn't mean to digress there. If you're interested in checking out our Longevity products or, Yongev or our Longevity business, call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. All right, we're talking connective tissue, the 25% of the body that strengthens our bones and our skeletal system and our joints and our blood vessels. The skin is mostly made up of connective tissue, even though it doesn't appear that way. We'll be talking about that here later on. If you want to anti-age, you want to stay youthful in form and function in appearance, you want to focus on connective tissue. The neat thing about focusing on connective tissue is because it's all one system. The connective tissue is all one system. When you do things for your bone connective tissue, you improve your skin connective tissue. When you improve, do things for your skin connective tissue, you improve your digestive system's connective tissue. When you do things for your digestive system's connective tissue, you improve everything else as well. The connective tissue in the blood, the connective tissue in the bone, the connective tissue in the cartilage. The, connect the connective tissue is one uniform unit, and focusing on the connective tissue will help the entire 25% of the body called connective tissue. That is simple, folks. That simplifies everything. You no longer have to worry about all these different parts. Just the connective tissue. Focus on the connective tissue and you'll be improving the health of your bones and your blood vessels and your, and your skin and your digestive system. And we'll talk about this here in a second for your brain too. Did you know your brain's mostly made of connective tissue? Nobody, says, nobody ever tells you that. Anytime you hear the word fibrosis, you are referring to connective tissue. Fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis, uterine fibrosis, fibrosis in the arteries, Fibrosis is a common, perhaps the most common process involved with aging and with disease. Fibrosis is an excess, excessive secretion of fibers, and this excessive secretion of fibers hardens things. It creates a difficult, it makes it difficult for, for fluids to flow, it makes it difficult for the body to move. The body's got to have a certain flexibility. All the parts of the body have to have a certain flexibility, and fibrosis impairs this. Wrinkles are also uh, about connective tissue, but they're the opposite problem. They're a lack of fibers. They're a deficiency in fibers, and both excessive fibers and deficiencies in fibers are an issue. Deficiencies in fibers are responsible for prolapses. Deficiencies in connective tissue fibers are responsible for hernias. Deficiencies in connective tissue fibers are responsible for uh, uh, weak bones. So you got two sides to, to, to connective tissue health problems. You got too much and you got too little. You got fibrosis and you got a weakening of the fibers. Stiffening of the arteries. Heart disease is the number one, uh, number one killer in this country, although soon to be superseded by cancer. But for now, it's the number one killer. And guess what? In many ways, heart disease is a connective tissue problem. Hang on, we'll elaborate when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific time and 10 to 11. 
10 to 11 Central Time and uh, 9 to 10 Mountain Standard Time every day, five days a week. We've got lots of archives up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can purchase products off the websites as well and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you've been listening to this program for any length of time, even for just the last half hour, you can kind of get the sense that I am on a mission. I want everyone to know what I know. Without being dramatic or melodramatic, my people perish for lack of knowledge. We are dying on the vine for lack of knowledge of chronic degenerative diseases that are the exact opposite of what the body's supposed to be doing. The body's supposed to be a regenerating system, and we're dropping dead of degeneration because we don't know what we're doing, and our doctors don't either. And we got to get that mindset out. We, we, we got to throw that idea out of our minds that our doctors know what they're doing. There's a really cool book that I'm reading now called, uh, I, you know, I always forget the names of the books I read. I'll have to get, I'll have to get it. Uh, a blizzard. Uh, uh, I'll have to get it for you during our break because I forgot the name of it. It's something about snowballs and blizzards. But the point of the book is that doctors don't know what they're doing, and it's not their fault. Medicine is an imperfect art. It's not a science, by the way. Only slightly is it a science, but it doesn't really follow scientific ideas. And our doctors can't help us because they're not necessarily scientists. They're clinicians. A clinical person, a clinician is somebody who manipulates statistics and symptoms. That's what a clinician does, and that's why we don't get better when we go to the doctor. What other profession could possibly could charge us every three months and not make what they were doing better. Could, you, could your mechanic do that? If you went to your mechanic it, with your, and there's something wrong with your car and uh, you went to pick up the car and he said, you know what, there's nothing I can do about this, but you got to come back every three months and you got to pay me $200. And I still want, I'm not going to be able to do anything, but I need to check. What if your plumber did that? What if you had a clogged toilet and, and your plumber said, you know, I can't do anything about this clogged toilet, but I'm going to need to come back every three months and you're going to pay me $200. You'd be like, what are you talking about? Well, that's medicine for us. And I'm not beating up any doctors. I'm beating up the idea that we can be medicalized into health. And that's what this program is all about. And that's what my personal mission is and my, my professional and spiritual mission in life is to help people understand these simple, basic ideas. But I can't do it myself. I need you to help. And that's why I do this program. And that's why I need you to pay it forward if you've benefited. And I know a lot of you guys have or if this makes sense to you. Pay it forward. It makes sense to you. Tell your friends and family. They don't need to suffer. Nobody has to have diseases because it's not in the body's nature to be diseased. And this is what we're about at Longevity. If you want to start a business, make some money, help promoting these ideas, please join the Brightside Ben team. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or uh, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, when we come back from the break, I'm going to tell you about this book because it's really cool and I've been meaning to talk about it. Meantime, we're talking about the connective tissue, and if you, you're probably getting the sense here that connective tissue is pretty darn important, and it's a lot more important than we're told, and there's nothing medicine can do for connective tissue. Let me repeat that. There's nothing medicine can do for connective tissue. Nothing, nada, zero, zip, nothing, but we can do a lot. Nutrition can do a lot for connective tissue. Connective tissue is involved in aging, it's involved in wrinkles, it's involved in osteoporosis, it's involved in heart disease. As we said earlier, the uh, coronary artery disease, which is the, the fancy, fancy term for hardening of the arteries, hardening, i.e. connective tissue, too much fibers. Heart disease is, in many ways, or atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. Sclerosis means hardening. Multiple sclerosis also, by the way, is a hardening. Whenever you hear sclerosis, that means hardening, which is about the connective tissue. More than 15 million Americans, almost 16 million Americans, have coronary artery disease, i.e. hardening of the arteries. Eight million of those people, half, more than half, have had heart attacks. 500,000, half a million people will die of atherosclerosis. A third of all deaths of Americans older than age 35 are connect, heart connective tissue problems, i.e. coronary artery disease. You think connective tissue is important? You better believe it is in this idiotic, capital I, strategy of shutting down the production of cholesterol when you have atherosclerosis is too, I, I just don't, I can't even begin to express to you for how biochemically ignorant this idea is. Of course, now they will actually, when you have hardening of the arteries and deposits, they'll actually reroute the blood and carve you out, cut you open and take out your heart and reroute things. That's called a bypass surgery. Maybe we just need to be taking care of our connective tissue. 
Maybe this is why vitamin C is so important, by the way. You know, vitamin C, animals don't get heart attacks, as Dr. Matthias Rath has, has pointed out. Animals don't get heart attacks, and animals make their own vitamin C. And oh, by the way, vitamin C is what's called the rate-limiting step in the production of connective tissue. So uh, heart disease, blood vessel stiffening and thickening that occurs as we get older, that's a major cause of heart disease, hypertension, blood clotting. These all precede the formation of plaques, by the way. Atherosclerosis precedes the deposition of plaques. The plaque is actually a combination of cholesterol and blood fats and calcium and blood proteins, all that sticks to the lining of the, of the heart. It all follows a hardening. So uh, atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis, cholesterol deposits, plaques, these are all connective tissue problems. Did you know the brain is made up of connective tissue? Yeah, when was the last time you heard that? The brain is mostly associated with connective tissue. 90% of the brain is made up of glial cells, G-L-I-A-L. Glial cells, the glia, as they're called, produce the brain's connective tissue. And guess what? The stuff that comes out is linked to Alzheimer's disease. Yes, Alzheimer's disease is a hardening of the brain. Just like hardening of the arteries is the cause of heart disease, hardening of the brain is the cause of Alzheimer's dementia. It's a connective tissue problem. Did your neurologist tell you that? No. They can't figure out what the heck to do. Oh, we're going to have a vaccine. Oh, we have a drug. Why can't we have a drug? We've got to figure out a way to take care of Alzheimer's disease. It's a connective tissue problem. It's not a nerve cell problem. It's a connective tissue problem. The glia aren't nerve cells. They don't have, they, they don't have that electrical thing that nerve cells have. They don't have the, the structure that allows them to, to conduct electrical energy. It's a connective tissue problem. And oh, by the way, so is Parkinson's disease. It's brain connective tissue. I was just reading an article this morning here. Let me see if I can find the darn thing about uh, Parkinson's disease. Oh, I got all kinds of good articles here. Glia. This is from uh, Movement Disorders, January 2011, the journal Movement Disorders. Glia, this is a headline, Glia, Initiators and Progressors of Pathology in Parkinson's Disease. That means the glia, the connective tissue cells in the brain, start it and, prog- and cause the progression of Parkinson's disease. Tell your neurologist to go to the library where, and read Movement Disorders, January 2011. You don't even need to do that because he can't do anything about your connective tissue, but we can. We've been talking about N-acetylglucosamine. We talked about vitamin C. We talked about more protein. We talked about being careful with sugar. One of the big problems with sugar is that it destroys connective tissue. It interferes with connective tissue. That's why Alzheimer's disease is type 3 diabetes. Among other things, it's got other problems associated with it. Oh, yeah, the glucogel caps, yes, we market that as an arthritis product, but because it helps you build connective tissue, it can help you with your Parkinson's disease, and it can help you with your Alzheimer's disease. You see how powerful nutrition is. Who would have thought that my arthritis supplement is going to help me with my dementia? But because of the nature of nutrition, you take your nutrient, nutritional supplement for one thing, and all connective tissue improves. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're talking connective tissue. And we will continue talking about connective tissue. All this has to do with uh, those sugars, like glucosamine. So anytime you hear me talking about connective tissue, you want to think about glucosamine. Glucosamine is tremendously valued for helping the body build and repair connective tissue. And because connective tissue is 25% of the body, that means 25% of the body will become more functional, healthier, stronger, more vital, and that includes the brain and the heart. When you're working on your connective tissue, use glucosamine, use the vitamin C, the glucogel caps, use your uh, 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 healthy start pack and vitamin D. Yes, vitamin D is also very important for connective tissue. Calcium is important for connective tissue. There's so many ways to go when it comes to building connective tissue, and we are going to spend lots and lots of time talking about this, especially as it regards the skin, because much of what we want in a skincare product is really connective tissue related. But because the connective tissue is located so far under, so much deeper in the tissue, in the skin, we can't really access it topically unless we know what we're doing. And this is where pharmacy and being a pharmacist come in so handy. Because being a pharmacist and pharmacy is the study, the art of delivery. 
delivering nutrients, delivering medicines in the case of pharmacists, in my case, delivering nutrients, in the case of skincare, delivering ingredients. This is what my Truth Skin Health products are, by the way, truthtreatments.com. They're not ordinary products. They're ways to deliver connective tissue building substances to the, to the dermis, to, the, to where the connective tissue is. That's the science and art of doing skincare, formulating products. That's why I get really, you know, I get a little ticked when I hear people who are selling skincare products who know nothing about this, the tissue or who are formulating skincare products, as nice as they may be, but they don't know anything about tissue. You cannot improve health if you don't understand the, the science and the nature of the, the tissue, the stuff, the bread to the cells raisins. Remember, we're raisin bread. All disease is cell disease, but it doesn't show up as cell disease. We don't see it as cell disease. We see it as degraded bread, whether we're looking at wrinkles or whether we're looking at the characteristic stooped, stooped over position or stooped over stature that uh, older folks have, or whether we're dealing with atherosclerosis or, or, uh, or, or dementias or Parkinson's disease. All of these are manifestations of connective tissue. Anyway, we'll talk about this a lot here in the coming days from, uh, uh, where is this from here? Scientist from the Gladstone Institute of Neurological Disease, GIND, the University of California, San Francisco, and Stanford have discovered that collagen may protect the brain against Alzheimer's disease. Hmm, how fascinating is that? Collagen being connective tissue. Yes, eat collagen. <coughs> the secret to the bone soup, or one of the secrets to bone soup, is you're eating connective tissue. You can get cartilage supplements. You can use my bone broth protein. That's a source of connective tissue proteins. And of course, collagen supplements can do the same thing. Scientists have discovered that a certain type of collagen protects brain cells against fibrosis, which are uh, amyloid proteins. Amyloid proteins are fibrosis, by the way. If you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry to say you're out of luck. You can't do it. Uh, you can, you can kind of imitate it. There's ways to use mushrooms. Mushrooms, as we've said, are a cross between, between the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom, so use uh, mushrooms. That's going to be your best bet. Uh, you can take amino acid supplements. That's another good thing to do if you're a vegetarian. If you're not a vegan, you can use whey protein supplements and egg. But by far and away, uh, cartilage and collagen are the best ways to get connective tissue supplements into your system. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Oregon and welcome Mary to the bright side. What's up, Mary? Uh, I have a someone, a friend who's willing to be a guinea pig to find out if the um, keto shake is uh, good for weight loss. Uh, Dr. Okay. Wellick said it was, and that he put the um, missing minerals, that the, the mineral that people were missing, into that shake. Uh, what he says, he put the mineral in that people are missing when they're overweight. Okay. Uh, so this friend asked me if oolong tea is just as good as green tea because I suggested to him to also use green tea to help him in weight loss and he said is oolong tea just No, oolong tea? is not as good as green. I'll tell you why. First of all, they're just they're the same things. Green tea's younger. Green tea uh, has more nutrients in it than oolong tea. Now, sometimes when a, when a substance ages, nutrients are released. So oolong does have some benefits. I'm not saying it doesn't, but green tea is just ridiculously good stuff. If you're going to drink tea, green, drink green tea. As far as taking green tea supplements, you know, here's the thing with herbal supplements. I was just talking to someone yesterday. She wanted to know about a particular herbal supplement. And here's the thing about herbs and herbal supplement, herbs in, that are added to formulations and, and herbal supplements. I'm not a big believer in them, and I love, I love working with plant medicine, first of all, I should say. And I've ha I had, a, in my pharmacy, I used to tincture herbs all the time, and I kept big jars of St. John's Ward and Damiana and Vitex that we would just keep tinctured in glycerites or in alcohol, and we would just keep them there forever, basically, for years. They would just sit on, our, on the shelf, and they were gorgeous, and we would just, when somebody needed some herbal tincture, we would strain out some and put it in a tincture bottle, and we would get really good results. But here's the problem when you buy herbal capsules, you buy herbal uh, formulas with herbs in it. The problem is you don't know where the herbs came from. You don't know how old the herbs were. You don't know where, what part of the plant was used. You don't know what the soil was like where the herb was grown. Do you follow me with all this, Mary? You have yeah. no idea with any of this. So they could be using herbs that are 30 years old for all you know. They could be using herbs that have zero nutritional value in them. And when you see the supplement facts or the nutritional value, they don't know what's in that particular herb. They're giving you what's in generically, what's supposed to be in the plant. But you don't know what the soil was like. You follow me, ma'am? 
Yeah. Not, and you want to add to all of that, when you typically get an herbal capsule or an herbal formulation, you're getting a microscopic speck of herb. Um, literally, well, not literally. So it's not a microscopic speck, but it's a tiny amount, like milligrams. That's not enough herb for, uh, for a gerbil, for a squirrel, let alone for a human being. That's not enough medicine. So if you want to work with herbal medicine or herbal, uh, and I'm, I, I'm not, I don't like the idea of medicine because I always think that we're not sick, we're starving. So, but if you want to go herbal medicine, get your own herb, make your own tincture, be your own herbalist. Get a book on formulation, on, on, on combinations, and then you can order plenty of herbs by the, by the pound on the internet. There's a company, by the way, a really, uh, there's a company, I don't even want to mention their name. They, they have a Colorado connection. It's a multi-level company, and they sell an herbal product with five, okay, I'll tell you the name. It's called ProTandem. And I know some of you out there are big time ProTandem. It's got five herbs in it. That's what they're selling, their miracle ProTandem. It's five herbs, including green tea is one of the herbs. I think turmeric is another one. I don't remember all five of them. If you want your ProTandem, and they sell for $50 for 100 capsules, and they put specks of herb in the capsules. All right, if you want your green tea and your turmeric, both of which are great herbs, go to the health food store, Whole Foods, go on the internet, get green tea. Uh, buy the pound. Dry green tea herb, turmeric. You buy turmeric for 8 bucks a pound, folks. I do it every day. I do a teaspoon of it every day. You put in, uh, put it in water and, and put some tea, some green tea with it, and you make a turmeric tea. And that's a gram of it. If, you, if I took 100 gram capsules, that would be 10 capsules. I'm sorry, that's 5 grams. That would be 50 capsules. A teaspoon is 5 grams. 50 capsules, uh, the equivalent of I'm putting in my tea. That's half a bottle. If you're buying by the 100, you'd be paying 30, 40 bucks for that. So if you want to go herbs, you want to go tea, the best way to do uh, well, I shouldn't say tea you can drink, but the best way to go with herbal medicine, if you're going to do herbal medicine in capsules or in formulations, is make your own tinctures, my recommendation. I know that was a long digression, Mary. Does that help you? Green tea, by the way, is much better than, than oolong tea. Do we have Mary still? Yeah. I think I rambled on too much. Hang on, Mary. We'll, get you, we'll finish up when we come back. Okay? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Adaptation to food deprivation as a clue for treating metabolic diseases. Adaptation to food deprivation. That means our response to not eating as a clue for treating metabolic disease, i.e. chronic degenerative disease. When people are deprived of food, a number of biolog... This is... I'm reading a quote here, by the way. Quote, when people are derived of food, uh, deprived of food, a number of biological mechanisms are set in motion to adapt the body's metabolism to the conditions of scarcity. Unquote. Where have you heard that before? This is from the journal Nucleic Acids Research. According to the researchers, this could ultimately be put to use in clinical environments to treat disease more efficiently. You don't need to wait for them in the future. They're saying this could ultimately be put to use. It could be put to use now. Don't wait for your doctor to read this and believe this. Why do you want to wait for the belief system, the meme, the mind virus, the dogma that's in our culture to, uh, to finally get the science, to finally be in tune with the science? The science moves way faster than the meme, than the virus, because institutions are set up to leverage and exploit the meme, and they don't want to die, i.e. pharmaceutical companies, and your doctor, and your specialist, and your surgeons. They're living on an old meme. They don't want to adjust their meme. They don't want to, so they infect us. Because they don't, they don't want to adjust our meme because they'd have to go get a real job because we wouldn't need them. Adaptation of food deprivation could treat metabolic diseases. This is, in, this is in the journal Nucleic Acids Research from last week. And guess what? You're not going to hear about it from the mainstream, mainstream medical model for 20 years or 10 years. You're not going to, you want to wait 20 years to get the science? That's what we're about here in this program, by the way. So anyway, I know I'm preaching to the choir because you wouldn't be listening to me ramble on if... You weren't already bought in. Right, Mary? In Oregon? Right, but keep rambling, Ben, because when you ramble, it reinforces what I know, and over the years, I'm able to tell other people more and more information. Good. That's awesome. You. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I didn't mean to, you know, I digressed a lot there about the tea and the herbs, but what did I answer your question? Green tea is more powerful than oolong tea, if that's what your question was. Yes, you did. Uh, um could I ask you what I called about last time? I want to say it back to you and see if yeah. I understood correctly. Okay. Okay. So the difference between bone soup and bone broth protein powder. Bone soup has more complex sugar molecules and less protein. 
and bone broth protein powder has more protein and less complex sugar molecules. Yes, the bone broth protein is a concentrate of the protein, the protein components of the solid components in bone soup. Not just the protein, but you're also going to get, uh, you're also going to get little the building blocks, the glucosamines and the chondroitins. So you're going to get other things too. But bone soup's got everything that's in the cartilage. But here's the thing, Mary. I'm glad you brought this up. When you're making your bone soup, you got to let that cartilage dissolve, which means you're going to be boiling the soup, boiling the bones and the chicken, and then you're going to be doing a reduction where it gets more concentrated, adding more water, boiling it down again, adding more water, boiling it down again, or you could simmer it. I, I don't know if I boil it that much now that I think about it, but just simmer it. Uh, simmer it, boil it, and then simmer it, and then uh, reduce it until it gets more concentrated, add more water, simmer it down. You know what I'm saying? That's called a reduction in cooking. And you want to do that because eventually you're going to get more and more of that cartilaginous material. And you'll know you've done it when your bones become nice and soft. Okay? So that's, that's a very important point. The more you do it, the more cartilage, cartilaginous factors you'll get. And it's these cartilaginous factors that are so anti-aging. In my bone broth protein, which you can find at brightsidehealth.com, you're going to get a more, con uh, more protein concentration. It's more for protein than it is necessarily for other, the immune system. And it doesn't have as broad a spectrum of nutrition in it as the, as the soup does. Does that help? Very much. Thank you. Okay, good. Good to talk to you, Mary. Have a great day. All right, Frank. Ooh, where did Frank go? Do I need to get Frank here in Florida? Uh, Frank in Florida. What's up, buddy? Good morning. Okay, good morning. So uh, I've been on the BGT for six months, and I've had some good results with it. Um, I just went for my uh, yearly physical, and we did some blood work, and I got the blood results back from Quest. Uh, when my doctor received them, he uh, called me right away and said, get off that supplement. Your B12 is way elevated. And He's a bonehead. No, I'm sorry. I, I cancel that. I'm sorry. That just came out. It was a reflex. Uh, first of all, you're not getting, you're getting a speck of B12 in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. That's not going to change your B12 levels. You got to really, you got to go crazy on B12 to have an effect on B12 blood levels. Uh, here's the thing, though. It's definitely something you want to note, and he should be smart enough to know that that could be something with your circulatory system, something with your blood cells, possibly something with the liver. That's where you really want to be focusing here. A B12 elevation in the blood doesn't mean you're getting too much B12, by the way, in the cells. The blood is supposed to deliver it into the cells, but elevations can actually mean that you're not getting enough B12. You follow me, Frank? It's not getting into the cells. Your cells aren't picking it up. It's staying in the blood. Does that make sense? Yeah. So functionally, you may be deficient in B12. Tell that to your doctor. So tell him, just don't tell him I say anything. Just ask him. He'll think you're really smart. Say, couldn't that, doc, couldn't that mean that maybe it's, my cells aren't getting the B12 and maybe I'm functionally deficient? Do you see what I'm saying, Frank? Yeah, yeah. So your problem is not that you're taking too much B12. It's that it's not getting into the cells. Now, can you get too much B12 theoretically and you have it elevated? Yes, theoretically. But that's not what your problem probably is. It's probably in the fact that, number one, your body's trying to make more cells. When your body tries to make more red blood cells, it'll, up, it'll increase B12 release from the liver. Now, why would your body try to make more red blood cells or blood cells, white blood cells, too? First of all, cancer can do it but I'm going to assume that's not the case. More than likely, it's because you're not getting enough oxygen. When your, body's not, when your cells aren't getting oxygenated, one of the mechanisms that the body uses to improve oxygenation is to make more blood cells. You with me? Yeah. So you're making too many blood cells. That's the first thing to think about. Now, there could be other things, too. It could, be, it could also be involving the liver. Uh, it, uh, it could be involving, uh, it, well, probably the liver. is Most likely, it's the liver, but it has something to do with the blood. Do you have any other symptoms? Uh, no, um, the, 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 uh, not tests. Work no, blood work okay. is an inaccurate measurement. You guys, not just for Frank, this is for everybody listening. Blood work is an inaccurate measurement of health, period. It's just all they can do. They can't do anything else because they don't understand how the body works biochemically. So they'll do blood work, which are standardized tests based on standardized reference ranges. It doesn't have anything to do with you personally, Frank. It's a statistical probability. So if you have elevated B12, which I don't necessarily know that you do, but I'm going to assume that you do, uh, then you want to look at the circulation. You want to look at improving the circulation. Always cut back to the basics. The basics are dirty blood, blood circulation, and our triangle of disease. So clean the blood out via digestive health strategies. Look for digestive symptoms, Frank. 
okay? You look for constipation, bloating, heartburn, anything that's a digestive symptom and link it to foods. Chances are really good. You sound like you're in your 40s or 50s at least, right? So chances are pretty good you're dealing with something because most people are. All right, that's the first thing. The second thing I'd be doing is I'd be focusing on blood sugar because that'll make the blood sticky when you're not handling your sugar correctly. Do all the diabetic stuff, sweeties, keep your blood intake low, selenium, sulfur, the beyond tangy tangerine. Thirdly, and this is what you should be doing right away, is oxygenating. Just improving oxygen entrance into the blood through the lungs by deep breathing. Also movement, circulation. Movement is very, very important. We'll talk about this next week. Movement and, and, connective, and the connective tissue or uh, health of the connective tissue are related. Movement, physical movement, getting on a, uh, uh, getting on a trampoline, a, a mini trampoline, a rebounder, or just brisk running, or even just getting on an exercise bike. Any kind of movement will improve oxygenation. If you improve oxygenation, Frank, slow deep breathing and bodily movement, improve blood flow with uh, reducing your intake of sugars and helping your body process sugar, patching up the gut, using your ultimate niacin, which is a vasodilator, using magnesium supplements, which also vasodilates. If you do all of these strategies and your blood ve- and your B12 levels drop, which is a, there's a good chance they will, you want to start, you, for the rest of your life, you want to be paying attention to circulatory health. Not that you don't want to be doing it anyway, but especially if you notice that you drop your B12 when you do these things. Okay? I think you've been on the head now because actually in the beginning of the year, I was forced to leave a job and take a job driving. So I literally spent the entire day in a vehicle driving. That easily could be a problem. Easily. Yeah. That could easily be involved. Yes, yeah, sedentary. If you're a truck driver out there, I know I've got a lot of truck drivers listening. If you if you got a sedentary job, you got to motivate to move. Put a rebounder by your desk. You know, even a slant board or an in, uh, a, uh, an inversion machine can have a positive effect on blood movement just by hanging upside down. The veins and the lymph, they depend on a pump. But if we don't have a pump, like our muscles are the pump, or the heart's the pump, if something's wrong with our pumping action, everything's going to pool to the bottom of the body, and uh, hanging upside down or using a slant board can reverse that. All right, I got to move, Frank. That's the end of the program. Thank you so much for your call. Hope we helped you out. Sorry if we left you on hold, but we will be back on Monday with more good health information on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Check out my skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com treatments.com or retinol 5% gel if you're dealing with acne or dark spots or truth serum and truth balm and truth omega-6 healing cream if you want a big old dose of vitamin C which everybody needs for anti-wrinkles because vitamin C is the rate limiting step in building connective tissue that's all have an awesome wonderful beautiful spectacular day I'm pharmacist Ben we'll talk to y'all later bye for now